how are you doing? Scott here from scottspayassessments.com and I've got something really, really cool for you today. One of the most important things as bass players is learning how to interact with the drummer, how to play with the kick drum, how to play against the kick drum and in the gaps. And it's a real, you know, it can be really tricky to know what to do and, and what an impact it can have on the sound of the song. So for today, I want to show you a lesson that's taken directly from one of the courses and from the academy over at scottsbasslessons.com. It's a great course. I want to also give a shout out to Phil Arnold, who's playing drums, and Mark Walker on keys. You guys are amazing. I love you, I love you, love you. I send all, your ba all my bass love to you. And if you like what you see, if you like this lesson, check out the academy. The full course is there for you and a zillion other courses as well. You can try it out totally free for 14 days. The link is below this video. So other than that, take it easy, enjoy the lesson, and I'll catch you in the shed. So when I say playing against the bass drum, I don't mean in any way, shape or form that I'm doing something that conflicts with what the kick drum is doing. I'm really always trying to lock in with it. I'm always listening to it. And if I can't listen to it, I'm, I'm looking to see what's going on down there just because we're two really rhythmical instruments and we need to make sure that what we're playing sits really well on top of each other. But in some certain scenarios, like for instance, if the drummer's really grooving out and every bar is playing, the kick drum's doing something different, well then it's sometimes too hard for us, or not too hard, but he's doing his thing, you know, he's just vibing out. We want to just keep out of his way. And he's improvising as well, it's not sort of like a repeated pattern that he's learned. He's just vibing out on the tune. So there's a certain, you know, a few techniques we can use just to keep out of his way. One of the techniques is just to play long notes while he's vibing out, and the other way is just to play short notes and just cut it off and just let him do his thing. Now the riff we'll be using in this exercise is based in F minor, meaning all the chord tones that you use are from the F minor scale, or F minor chord should I say, which is F, A flat, C, and E flat again, F, A flat, C, and E flat. But as always, as I always say, you need to learn these arpeggios in different positions as well. It's okay just playing down here, but what happens if you want to move up here? You need to be able to sort of like move around the fretboard because you want to be able to communicate with other musicians, you know, you want to be able to interact with them. And if you're stuck down here all the time, it does get a bit boring and you're really limited in what you can play. So let's hear this beat full. Give us something really syncopated. This, give us that syncopated bass drum. Something about this speed. Uh, Two, three, four. Now listen to the bass drum. Listen how the pattern's always changing. Always changing, so we need to play something where we're not going to get in the way. We need to be keeping out of the way. So at the opposite end of the spectrum, what happens if the kick drum is hardly doing anything? What if it's a really simple groove? Well, that's great as well because it gives us more, you know, we can have a lot more movement in the bass line. We don't really have to worry about clashing with what he's doing. We can kind of play around. It gives us a lot more freedom. So within this, uh, this groove that I was playing, the it's in F minor, remember? So my first port of call is just chord tones, all the F minor chord tones, F, a flat, C, E flat, F, 
And remember, they're all over the place. Even all the way up here. And then on top of that, I can use scales as well. And because it's F minor, I can use an F minor Dorian scale. Which is F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, E flat, and F. Again, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, E flat, and F. Now it's not that different to the actual arpeggio. The arpeggio has got four notes in it. One, two, three, four. The scale's only got seven notes in it. So we're only adding in two, well, three notes. I have to get my math right. Yeah, we're only adding three notes. So if, you know, if scales are a little bit daunting, just stick with the chord tones for now. And then, you know, once you get the chord tones down, move into the scales, see if you can play around with that. I'm using Dorian minor there. You could also use a natural minor, which is exactly the same as the Dorian minor, except it's got a D flat instead of a D, a D flat. And I'm just using these for fills and just, you know, little, you know, twiddly bits, sort of like making it a little bit more interesting. But because the drums on this example I'm going to be showing you, are really, they're just a real steady beat. It's going to give me a lot more room to play around. So if you just give us the hats fill, just sort of like a but, 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 but. So the groove will be chord tones. Scales, I'll do scales this time. And that was just Dorian Minor, that's wicked, that's wicked. So let's now have a look at this groove. Phil, so if you can play as a real basic groove here, just sort of like bass drum on one and three and then we're going to join in after that after a few bars and you'll see how much more movement I've got because Phil's playing something simple. Take it away Phil. So one, two, three, four. So listen to that, listen to that kick drum just on the one and three. One, two, three. Completely different vibe now. I've got more freedom. Scale. I could play around with the rhythm a little bit. 